place for the old duke now. A knife on the shelf in the library. Eight o'clock. We made a clean getaway, Duke. Yeah, well, I broke out a better clinch than that. Yeah, I know. Well, that's why I made a deal with you to help me make this break. I wouldn't have had a chance without you. Listen, Pearson. This is strictly business with me. You promised me 500 bucks if I'd get you out of there. Don't worry. You'll get your money. We've got to get some more clothes before daylight. We won't get far in these things. How do you mind that? That's been taken care of. Come on, follow me. Yeah, that's the place, all right. Sure, there they are. Come on, get busy. You said it. The sooner I get out of this rig, the better I'll like it. I never should have been out in the first place. Yeah, I know. Same old story, framed. Well, my story's on the level. This life stretch I was doing for the killing of my brother was on the false testimony of a man named Roger Morgan. You mean Roger Morgan, that big shot moneyed man? That's the man. Well, why would a big guy like that be interested in putting you away? My brother got him to help finance a new type of super fighting claim we were working on. I was against the deal, and we had an argument. Shortly after that, my brother was killed in a test flight. They found the plane had been tampered with. And Morgan's lying testimony convicted me. Yeah, I know. And then he moved in and took over all the business. No, just the wreckage. My brother had hidden all the important specifications. Say, are those the things that visitor was trying to proposition you about? Yes. He was Morgan's private secretary. Then why take a chance in going over the wall and maybe getting shot when you... Well, you, you could have walked out the front door. If you wanted to... Trade you even up, didn't he? Uh, that is, uh, give you a parole for, uh, well, uh, some kind of blueprints or something, didn't he? Yeah, so he said. But I'd keep those plain specifications in my hands. Uh, I got your pigeons. Uh, they're worth two, huh? Yeah, plenty. Morgan's lot will trip himself trying to get them. And that's my chance to prove he was responsible for my brother's death. Uh, where, are, where are those things now? Uh, where'd your brother hide them? Up in Pine Valley, there's Mountain Lodge. That's where I'm heading right now. That's where we're heading right now. I'm sticking with you. Do you pay me off? All right, all right. Let's go. Morning, Miss Morgan. Hello, Andrews. Did you just get back? Yes, sir. How did Pearson react to my proposition? He turned it down cold. He said he'd rather rot in prison than see those drawings in your hands. Yeah, I figured that. But I'm still going to get control of that Pearson pursuit play. How are you going to do it? I have made up my mind to adopt Bobby Pearson. What? Adopt Harry Pearson's two-year-old child? Good heavens, you can't do that. His father's dead. His uncle is a convicted felon. He has no other living relations. Now, somebody's going to have to take care of his affairs. So why shouldn't I? Mr. Morgan, there are a lot of people who think you were responsible for Harry Pearson's crash in that test plane. Then you had his brother convicted on the flimsiest of evidence. And now you want to adopt this youngster. You're skating on thin ice. And you're doing it all just to gain control of those plane designs. I started out in the beginning to get them. I never start anything I don't finish. But you don't even know where they are. I know I don't. But sooner or later they'll show up. And when they do, I'll control them through Bobby Pearson. Everything proper and legal. You're within the law, Mr. Morgan. Frankly, I don't like it. Andrews, you've been in my employ for a long time. 
Now, if you feel that way about it, I'll get someone else to handle my private affairs. I'm sorry. I suppose you want me to have the adoption papers drawn up right away. That's right. Yes? Now, put him on. Watch the court hearing through as soon as possible. I'll have Miss Adams bring the child out here so we'll have him available. Hello? What's that? Say that again, please. No, no, there's nothing I can tell you now, but... Well, I'll have to give this matter some thought. Carl Pearson broke out of prison last night. He's reported seen heading toward Pine Valley. Pine Valley? Isn't that where Ruth Adams has young Bobby Pearson for the summer? That's right. Hello. Get me long distance. Long distance? Connect me to Pearson Lodge in Pine Valley. Hurry, please. I'm going to try to get Miss Adams to come to town right away. Hello? They don't answer? Is this the Pine Valley operator? Well, it's vitally important that I contact Miss Adams. A messenger? Yes, send it at once, please. Don't worry, Miss Bone, I'll find her. There's a letter waiting for me from Carl. I'll give you a call. Please do, Jim. You know, I haven't heard from him in over a month. Immediately, and I'll explain everything to you when you get here. All right, I'll leave right away. 
Well, we should be there in a half hour or so. Okay. our program for an important news flash with reference to the two escaped convicts, Duke Williams and Carl Pearson. Again, we describe them. Duke Williams, six feet one inch, weight 150 pounds, medium complexion, brown hair, brown eyes, star on back of left hand, a two-time loser for manslaughter and grand larceny. Carl Pearson, five feet 11 and a half inches. Weight 152 pounds, brown eyes, fair complexion, brown hair, no distinguishing marks. We have reason to believe they are headed in the direction of Pine Valley. The state police warns all citizens to be on the lookout for the escaped men. The governor has authorized a reward of $1,000 for the capture of the convicts. Anyone having information as to their whereabouts, get in touch with the state police or your local police authorities at once. That is all. We will now continue with our regular program. And did you get this rappled up like this? Well, I was fishing, and I caught a fish that long. How long? That long. Already it was at least that long. like we have visitors. Hello, Lieutenant Franklin. What brings you up to these parts? Well, the chief sent me down to see you again. A couple of convicts escaped last night. 
say, I'm mighty glad to see that you have Carl Pearson's dog here. He's not really my dog, Lieutenant. Carl left him with my nephew, Johnny. That's the same thing as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> Acting so strange for. What's in your car that interests him? Carl Pearson's convict clothes. He was one of the men who escaped last night. Carl escaped? That's right. They lost their trail up on the pass, but they were seen hidden this way. You haven't seen them, have Jim? No, I haven't. I want to borrow this dog, Jim. I want to put him on the spot where the convicts were last seen. It's my one chance to trail them through that wilderness. Well, I guess there's nothing else you can do, Lieutenant. But to use a man's own dog to track yeah, him down. But these men are outside the law. Well, you're the boss. You can't take my dog. You can, I tell you. He's mine. Mr. Pearson left him with me. Uncle Jim, don't let him take Riddy. He's only following him, Johnny. You'll bring him back now, won't you, Inspector? Why, of course I will, Johnny. Now, don't you worry a bit. He'll be back to you. job that only you can do. Find Carl. Go find Carl. Look here, old fellow. Escape convicts are outlaws and they've got to be captured. Now, take the trail. Find Carl. Go find your master. Go find your master. Will you go find your master? C come on, try again. Will you find your master? What's the matter, Lieutenant? No trail? No cooperation. The trail's here, all right. They were seen crossing here, but they kept to the rocks and left no tracks. It's this dog. To know what it's all about. Now, wait a minute. Don't start up blaming. There's no time for sentiment. Carl Pearson must be caught. And this dog must lead us to him. See if you can get a bit of I guess you're right, Lieutenant. I'll see what I can do. You're a pretty smart dog, Lindy. At times, I think you're half human. Oh, I know how you feel about Carl. I feel that way myself. But duty is duty. 
Now do something for me. Go and find Carl. Will you? Go on now. Find Carl for me. He is on the tree, all right. Oh. We should have got rid of that guy. He tipped off the law, and now they're following us with a dog. I'll put an end to that. Don't shoot. You'll tell them right where we are. down by your own dog. Well, he won't do it again. Put that flap down.
little boy you just about saved my life. <clears throat> Bobby, what are you doing here? Where's Miss Adams? Well, cool. I'm gonna go get my shirt and then I'm gonna take you home. Miss Snow, I had about enough on you today. No. Yes, you get in there and no. say, no. Come on, Rennie, get in, old boy. Come on, get in. That's what I say. Stay, okay, Rennie. lost the dog for sure. Well, frankly, I think he's lost us. Oh, there's no use wandering around here anymore. Uh, then, let's go back. me over the ridge. I'll meet you at the cabin. All right, now you keep your eyes open as you ride. I'll you? do that, Lieutenant. Miss Adams left for town this afternoon. I believe she did, Mr. Morgan. 
Neither she nor the youngster were at the lodge when I called there today. Were you expecting her in town? She had an appointment earlier this afternoon in my office. She's driving, and I thought maybe she might have met with an accident. I wish you'd check on that for me. All right, Mr. Morgan. Goodbye. Say, Jim, what's Morgan got to do with this girl, Ruth? I don't know. I think we'd better take a look at that Pearson Lodge before we do anything else. If you think Ruth had anything to do with Carl's escape, you're dead wrong. In fact, she doesn't know anything about it. Or she didn't the last time I saw her. Just the same, we're going to check on it. Roger Morgan? Yeah, well, uh, you don't know who I am, but uh, that don't make any difference. I've got something I think you want. Some, uh, well, I don't know, some aeroplane drawings of the uh, Pearson Pursuit Plane. Pearson Pursuit Plane? So just who are you? Well, of course I'm interested, but... All right, go ahead. I'm listening. 20,000 bucks. Yes? The 
Clovis from Pine Valley. Pearson's Lodge. Thank you. Andrews, get the car. I'm getting up there as quick as possible. Right from the beginning. 
That's why you railroaded me to prison, so you could get control of them, isn't it? You'd be pretty dumb not to know that by now. Yes, and you'd have gone still farther if necessary to get Let's get down to business. I haven't any time to waste, Pearson. Get those plans. Okay, Morgan. You win. They're right over here. Well, they're gone. What are you trying to do? Kid me? No. Well, they were here. I know they were. Somebody stole them. So that's why you phoned me a while ago. Phoned you? I had your call traced here. You told me you had the drawings as willing to make a deal for him. Now make up your mind you're going to give them to me or, or what, Morgan? Listen, you fool. I rubbed out your brother. And if I do the same to you, I'll be given a medal for bringing in an escaped convict. Dead or alive. In your case, dead.
Oh, man. 